trucks are the lifeblood of Australia, that's the saying. But they're very draggy. Carting goods all around the world means that even a few percent saving in drag reduces fuel consumption and ultimately how much something will cost you then. Some improvements to truck aerodynamics include the little spoiler on top of the roof that guides the flow from over the windshield to over the semi-trailer part, also known as a reefer. By doing so, you reduce how much flow and high-speed flow slams into the trailer, hence drag drops. Another problem area of a truck is the rear wheels, and more accurately, the space between the middle wheels and the rear wheels. That allows outside air to enter in and hit the rear wheels, causing more drag. A company in Australia, Slipstream, reached out to us and asked us to test the design that they had been working on. They wanted to know how much the drag would change if they were added to a semi-trailer truck. So we tested their designs on this pretty aerodynamic truck already. It features some smooth contours to help guide the flow, but the underneath could use some work. We simulated this geometry with our skirts first, and then with these skirts to see how the truck performed. This is at 100 kph, which is about 28 meters per second. The color bar is in meters per second. We asked them if we could make a video about it because the truck's aerodynamics in general are a little different to regular cars and it highlights some interesting effects. These are the results. This is a cut plane down the center of the truck and to begin with, the flow is kind of how you expect it. The front of the truck is undoubtedly bad. I mean, it's just a flat vertical face plowing through high speed, high kinetic energy flow. As the flow hits the front, look at just how much of it decelerates almost to zero meters per second. On top of that, there is so much flow that has to be redirected vertically, and it is still only around 8 meters per second. In the pressure plot, you can see just how much high pressure forms on the front. Effectively, the entire front, except the top sliver, is in high pressure. That pushes the truck back and increases the drag dramatically. Underneath the truck, we actually see a very similar flow feature to that found on regular cars. There is a little sharp lip, the vast amount of flow that has to go underneath it here separates that creates a very large wake and drag. And because so much flow has to be redirected from the front and pushed underneath, we can see how much it accelerates underneath. We're seeing speeds up to 60 meters per second, double the free stream flow speed. With that, we do get good low pressure underneath, which is good for downforce production, but that's not really important for a truck. The top of the cab is really good though. The flow has attached impressively well. That gives the rear flared section of the cab great flow to work with and hopefully direct it in the best possible way. Here it is almost perfect, but what we see is actually how this little section can't function 100% well just by itself. So if you look at the flow going over the top of the cab, it is shot at a very favorable angle to the trailing reefer. At this angle, the flow has a great chance of seamlessly attaching to the top of the reefer and no wake will be formed but it doesn't. It does very well, but there is a small wake forming still. Why does it form if the flow over the top of the truck is perfectly aligned with the reefer to begin with? Well, in this video, it's a little hard to see why, but in the streamlined orbit, the reason is much clearer. Looking from the side, you can see how some streamlines get sucked into this volume between the cab and the reefer. That makes sense actually, because the pressure plot shows that there is low pressure in there. So naturally, Flow will want to go into there. That's not necessarily a problem. The problem is that with more flow constantly entering this space, there's not enough room and some air has to go somewhere. Fortunately, this area is so open that it can escape easily. The bad part is that some of the flow escapes through the top and meets the oncoming air that was flowing over the cap. Because these two regions of flow are at very different velocities, something called a shear layer is formed. One telltale sign of that is that vortices are formed at the interface between these two regions at the shear layer. The reason why it's called a shear layer is because these two flows are shearing across each other. So with these vortices, we have less ordered flow that now marks up the great flow from over the cabin. We now have some flow slamming just into the top of the reefer and that creates more drag too. Just quickly, these simulations were done with open foam. If you'd like to learn open foam, then check out our courses here. From 4 meters above the ground and looking down, we get another good view of this process. Now looking over the rest of the trailer, the flow is very nice. It settles down and those vortices created disperse quite a lot. But one thing that is interesting to me is just how thick the boundary layer is. 
That might not seem very big, but that's because the truck is large to begin with, so this boundary layer is actually close to half a meter thick. That's even more impressive when you consider that there isn't even an adverse pressure gradient down the truck. So there's nothing pushing back on the flow, decelerating it, and then causing this thick boundary layer. This boundary layer gets thick simply because of how long the trailer is, and that the flow was turbulent to begin with. So the boundary layer was turbulent straight away, and turbulent boundary layers are thicker than laminar ones anyway. So those vortices that formed from the top shear layer, and general mixing, while they disperse quite quickly, their effects propagate far longer. In terms of the effect that that thick boundary layer has on drag, well, there will be more skin friction drag from the turbulent boundary layer than if it were a laminar, but because this object is so large, a laminar boundary layer wouldn't last the entire way anyway. The thicker boundary layer means the final wake is a little larger, which is more drag too. Now underneath the reefer, that is where the action is. In the center plane to begin with, the flow is okay. It's actually a little better than I expected. It's not a complete wake, but once we pass the middle wheels, we do have a complete wake now. So the good bit didn't last that long. From this angle, the large wake, while bad, has a benefit, and that is you have very slow moving flow hitting the rear wheels now. That's great for drag because it means that there isn't much energy to dump into the wheels and convert into drag, but that's from this angle. If you look at this plane, that's looking from underneath the trailer and it's 20 centimeters off the ground. In the center, there is very blue flow, and that's what we saw in the center plane. But even half a meter either side, the flow is now much faster, and that flow is hitting the wheels and creating drag. So this center plane taken just by itself isn't the whole story, and this plane from underneath shows how the flow changes radically. And that's actually the problem identified with these trucks. There is quite fast moving flow entering this empty undercarriage area, and it hits the wheels. So we do now have more kinetic energy being wasted and creating drag, as we can see here. The hope is that skirts will reduce this problem. We'll see later if that's the case. One thing I'm impressed with in this center plane is that the pressure is very uniform. For a highly chaotic flow underneath, the pressure doesn't change very much in this plane. That's a little surprising. It might be that the flow is so slow that it doesn't have much kinetic energy to convert into static pressure anyway. So the changes we see here are relatively small. If you don't know what I mean by the static pressure and converting it between it and dynamic pressure, or what these are, then check out this video we made a few weeks ago detailing them and in relation to a car's aerodynamics. Now we come to the rear wake in this center plane. As you might expect, given how blocky the trailer part is, the wake is massive. But surprisingly, the pressure isn't that low. It is lower than the free stream flow, but given just how big the rear wake is, it doesn't drop that much. That's reflected in the drag where, while we do get quite a lot of drag at the rear, it's not that red because the pressure isn't that low, so the pressure drag is lower here. One interesting region is just below the trailer. There are these little slots and the air coming through them is quite a bit faster than the regular wake. So it's almost like there's a jet shooting into the wake. I'm surprised how much of a wake is coming from the bottom of the slot, that step part of the structure. It's a little tiny detail, but streamlining that would reduce the drag a small amount. Let's now move to more horizontal planes to see how the flow is moving around the sides of the truck. This plane is 10 centimeters off the ground and we're looking down on it. The front wheel wakes are horrible. <laughs> well, I can't remember seeing anything quite this bad. The flow comes in, hits the front, and then just jettisons out like crazy. And this occurs for two reasons I can see. The first is, obviously, because the bottom of the wheels are exposed, so there is good surface area for the flow to hit and have to redirect. We actually see this kind of thing on many modern cars, including a lot of supercars, like the Aston Martin DB11. But while these cars have this effect, it's not as bad as here. And that's because this truck has such a large and flat front face. So remembering back to the center plane, we had all this air hitting the front face and having to redirect somewhere. Some goes over the top, some around the sides, and some underneath. We saw that the flow going underneath was very high speed and possibly the fastest out of anywhere in the flow. So now we have this high speed flow and a lot of it being directed right into the front wheels. That causes this massive wake to blow out. So one question that arises is, could we alleviate it by redirecting more of the front flow around the sides perhaps? 
We're looking at this plane, which is two meters off the ground, so about halfway up. We see the flow around the edges are pretty good, not fantastic, but a lot better than the flow around the wheels. We still get some wakes here, but they're manageable. So we might be able to reduce the front wheel wakes by directing more of the front flow around the sides. But then one thing to keep in mind is that that additional side flow might make the side wakes larger. A way around that would be to add guide vanes on the front edges. All of that is to say that it would be possible to reduce the front wheel wakes, but it would take quite a bit of redesigning. And looking at the drag, the front wheels and the lower front edges are producing some of the most drag in the entire flow. Just quickly, if you'd like us to simulate your very own car, let us know here. Looking at the rear wheels, it's not that surprising that we get large wakes after the rear wheels. By this stage, the flow has been jumbled up so much through other regions and there isn't much energy left. Moving up 10 centimeters to 20 centimeters off the ground, we still get huge wakes from around the front and after seeing the drag plot and just how much drag we get around this region, it's not that surprising. So that's the truck without skirts. Let's see what happens when we put skirts on. So the skirts run from just behind the middle wheels up until the rear wheels mud guards. The flow on the front and top of the truck is pretty much the same with and without the skirts. What that tells us is that the skirts are not affecting the flow far away from them. Underneath the reefer though, we're now seeing quite a large change. Predominantly, the flow is much slower. That's good in that the rear wheels aren't being slammed with high speed flow, hence not as much kinetic energy is wasted on them, but it could potentially be bad because we have to ask, well, why is this flow so low energy to begin with? Have we lost energy somewhere else? We know that this center plane, while highly informative, isn't showing everything. So let's look at these planes, 50 centimeters off the ground, and we're looking up from underneath. So looking up underneath the skirt, we now see a major difference. With the skirts, the flow between the middle and rear wheel sections is super slow. By contrast, without the skirts, the flow is much faster. But that's a bad thing here. The reason is because this flow is only faster because it's sucking in outside air. Faster moving flow, mixing with it, and then shooting it into the rear wheels. With the skirts, the outside faster flow is more isolated from the inside flow. What that tells us is that in both situations, the inside flow has lost about the same amount of kinetic energy because of the wheels and stuff upstream. But without the skirts, we're now sapping more energy from our side. While with the skirts, we're not sapping away as much energy from our side. It's kind of like when someone has the plague, he or she goes into isolation so that others aren't infected. Here, the higher speed flow isn't infected by the lower speed flow. And comparing the pressure plots, we see a major difference when the skirts are in place. Without them, the flow slamming into the front of the rear wheels produces periodic high pressure. With the skirts, that is completely alleviated. That right there is a major indicator that drag is being reduced. But the skirts don't just affect this inside region. Because they prevent the outside flow from going in, the outside flow now blows out more. And this outside flow is not just free stream flow, but also the weights from upstream objects like the front wheels. These differences we saw were from the plane slicing through where the skirts are. The skirts only extend a finite amount downwards. What happens if we go below that line? Well, this plane is 20 centimeters off the ground, and we're looking up in awe. Here, there's not much of a difference. We get outside flow rushing in and hitting the rear wheels now. So the skirts are really protecting the top half of the wheels about. But another thing that's interesting is that that's not enough to affect the rear wake too. Back in the center plane, the rear wake is very similar between the two configurations, but there seems to be a minor difference at the bottom with the flow going through the ladder bit. Without the skirts, the flow seems to be fairly horizontal and even downwards a little. With the skirts, the flow seems to be kicked up a little. It's a little hard to tell why, because if you look at the 50 centimeter horizontal plane, the flow at the rear doesn't look that different between the skirts and no skirts case. But looking at the streamlines, when skirts are present, the flow from underneath seems to be shot through the undercarriage more, and maybe that's why it flows up more in the wake. That makes sense to some extent because the skirts are isolating this region. At one meter off the ground, looking up underneath the skirts, we see the flow around the rear wheels and the spare wheels are much slower. That's great in terms of drag because that means there's less kinetic energy to waste on them. Apart from that, around the skirts and downstream of them, the rest of the flow looks pretty much the same. And the same is true as we go higher to 2 meters, 
3 meters and 4 meters off the ground. So how did the skirts affect the drag coefficient? Well, without the skirts, it came in at 0.591, which is very good for a truck. With the skirts, that number dropped to 0.566. For the lift, which doesn't really matter, but I was curious, without the skirts, this entire ensemble produces 44.6 kilos of downforce, which is better than almost any car we've tested. With the skirts, it produces even more downforce, 52.7 kilos, about as much as a large sandwich. If you're staying on YouTube, YouTube thinks you'll like this video, so check it out. Peace out, amigos.